welcome to Make Today Count, your 20 minutes of fresh conversation served up to inform, educate and inspire an abundant life. I'm your host Ross Dean and each episode I chat to thought leaders, influencers and experts in their game who all have one thing in common, the desire to go that extra mile. Pushing against the status quo to create a richer life for both themselves and those around them. Powered by compassion and driven by the need to leave the world that little bit better than when they arrived. Okay, hey guys, and welcome to back to episode four of Make Today Count. We have an amazing guest today in the form of Gemma Scopes from How to Make Friends. Gemma Scopes is on a mission to cure and banish the taboo of loneliness through her award-winning blog, podcast, and coaching. After completing her own year-long friend project to make new friends, she now helps others to do the same, as well as building their self-worth and self-confidence. Hey Gemma, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm really well. Thank you so much for your time um, this evening. Um, it was it was one of those conversations that I really wanted to kind of delve into um, because although um, I, as you know, I'm a guy and and a lot of your content is is kind of aimed, at, I guess, at at, at ladies. Um, when I sort of came across your work, it was something that I could really um, associate with. Um, so I really wanted to kind of get you on board because I think a lot of the things you speak about are, are so important and some of the things we just, just don't really talk about for whatever reason. And um, so no, I really appreciate your time and looking to sort of delve into some conversation this evening. Um, what I'd like to do first is if maybe um, the guys listen haven't come into contact with the work that you do, can you give us a little bit of background of kind of about your journey and how you came to be where you are today? Yeah, it's been, it has been quite a journey, actually. So a couple of years ago, I found myself in my late 20s. And I like newly become single, moved back in with my parents, and just felt incredibly lonely. And I think when you're in a relationship setting, you know, you can be in a relationship for a, a good few years. And obviously, everyone moves on and, and has their own lives. Mm. And I thought you know oh, I'll just sort of slot back into my life as it was before I was in that relationship but actually everyone had moved on and especially in sort of 20s 30s you know so much can change in that time like life events people get married move away change jobs have children and we never really think of the impact that this has on friendships So I found myself, yeah, just feeling a bit lonely. And I thought, actually, I'm going to go out and try and make some new friends. So I thought I'd set myself a year long friend project just just for a bit of fun, really, just something to do. Um, And I thought, yeah, I'll start this blog and just sort of document what I do just for my own use, really, just to look back and see, you know, what was kind of a successful way of making friends or whether there was a perfect formula for doing so. so I started the blog, but as soon as I did start the blog and started talking about it with various people, I just realized that actually so many other people wanted to make friends too. And Mm. even those people that seemingly had it all, you know, the people you can easily (laughs) think I want their life. you know, (laughs) Um, Even those people feel lonely and want to make friends too. So um, yeah, the blog very much quickly became a, resource to help other people to do the same as what I was doing and it just takes for one person I think to be open and honest and say yeah I'm over here and I feel lonely for then other people to do the same yeah so um so yeah that was the how the blog started and then I've since turned that into a podcast um and then do the coaching as well perfect and and why do you think that is you know we you spoke about there about you know I think at no other time has it been so easy to to use these avenues we have with social media and kind of I guess compare ourselves and compare um our lives to someone else why do you think we kind of um we're we're worried about talking about these things is it kind of a a shame element of it do you think or or why is it yeah in your experience what what do you find I think actually a lot of it comes from our childhoods Okay. And we're taught this kind of myth of finding a best friend and having a best mm. friend forever. Um, and it just, you know, 
it just doesn't work like that. Very rarely will you find one best friend and have them forever. Um, so a lot comes from childhood and the expectations there. Um, but as well with the internet, it really is so easy to compare your life to others and really easy to think of the world as such a huge place, which it is. But actually, the most important thing is that you, inside your little bubble in the world, um, is happy. So if you have that support network around you and those people that make you happy, that's what's important. Yeah, I think I was having this conversation with one of my friends the other day and that, you know, in if we th- think pre-internet, you know, we'd probably know what our families were doing, our close friends were doing, and maybe the next door neighbor, what they were doing. And we'd probably compare, you know, keeping up with the Joneses and all that kind of stuff with the next door neighbor. But now we just have access to like the whole world. Yeah. And they, they, it's just exponentially just grown so much. And it just, it, I think it's for a lot of people just kind of over, overwhelming when you think of the speed of your, your timeline on Instagram or, or, or Facebook and it just kind of, you know, the speed that it goes and it's quite, it's quite easy to feel overwhelmed I think in in those situations and what what you mentioned before actually about your journey and how you came to the point where um you there was friends that were kind of moving on and having families and and getting married and so you know I found myself on the other side of that in in that I when I started to have um, children and when, when I got married and and so forth um it was a similar situation, but from the other side of the fence, if that makes sense. So yeah. where, where you were kind of, um, I guess losing or not, not losing friends, but coming less associated with friends because life moves on and they were doing other stuff. Um, I found myself in, a, in the same situation whereby my life was more around my, my immediate family that I was, you know, making with my wife and, um, friends that didn't have, um, ch- children and, and that kind of stuff. I found, I felt myself, less associated with them so it's it's really funny that it's the same problem or the same challenges that each of these sides are having it's just from a different viewpoint definitely Um, and that's something that really surprised me I think when I first went into this because I was so in my little bubble you know thinking oh maybe I'll find some other single people out there that are lonely too whereas actually like you said so many people from different situations and walks of life were coming forward to be like oh actually you know things have changed for me too Mm. And yeah, it's just that ever changing kind of priority list, isn't it? Where friendships actually gets moved further and further down the pile. Yeah. And what I found, you know, personally was it, it was, I guess at the beginning it was, I felt, I guess, frustrated that, um, like you said, I couldn't keep those relationships or those friendships that I'd had for such a long time. But yeah. over time you just realize that, you know, people move on and it's, really it's just our kind of our values may change and what we're looking for in in friendships and relationships I guess change and it's not that we're losing well we are kind of moving away from them but it's given us opportunity in that gift of finding new people that we associate with um that we're going to get more out of that relationship as we go forward I guess I, I guess for me it was more about okay well those people have moved on um I'm now interested in ABC you know I need to just go and find people that share the same thing and, and just kind of getting closure to that first chapter and then moving on to the second. Is that kind of similar to how you found it? Yeah, definitely. And I'm still, I'm still friends with those friends, you know, oh, yeah. that I kind of yeah. felt myself distanced away from, but like mm. you say, actually you need friends for now as well that are on a similar path that can help you down that path. And something yeah. I always bang on about is that friendships flow and that they're meant to, so yeah. it's okay to have friends for years. It's okay to have friends for really short amount of time. Um, mm. You know, there's, there's no guideline to the perfect friends, but as long as you've got people around you that are making you happy, feel connected, and that you feel like you're part of a community, then yeah. that's all you can ask for. Yeah, and I think you, you hit the nail on the head when you said that, you know, from our childhood, we sort of look back, if you think about those key messages we're given as child, you know, if it's for, from Disney through Happy Ever After, for Friends Forever and all that kind of stuff, it is just what we build up in ourselves as to how a friendship or relationship should be. Um, and, you know, I guess that's that's all lovely and, and rosy when you're young and you're, um, you know, just learning about that stuff. But, you know, you, you kind of think, we need to sort of educate later on in life that it's not that way um and you know sometimes it you will have friends you have for life i guess um and some you kind of move on for and that that's okay you know there's nothing wrong in that um so um there's i think there's a 
a lot of things to to kind of take into consideration but um so why why do you think i mean i I guess it depends on the situation but from your experience when you've kind of spoke to people either through the blog or the podcast or just kind of meeting people through your project um why do we kind of um, find ourselves feeling lonely at times is it kind of like key events or is it key changes in our in sort of our lives what do you kind of find is the sort of the most prominent factors so i think there's two main parts to feeling lonely hmm. um and the first one which people n- don't necessarily think about is that we just can't spend time with ourselves um okay and we don't know how to connect with ourselves or to be our own best friend so mm. a lot of the work I do, I get people doing self-worth, self-confidence before even trying to make new friends. Yeah. Um, and it's so easy when you feel lonely to project all of that onto someone else and to be like, okay, I need friends to fill this void, um, mm. which was a huge part of my friend project. You know, I thought, okay, I need to go out and make these friends, but actually I needed to make friends with myself first. Mm. So the first main one to feeling lonely is can you actually spend time by yourself? Are you happy, you know, with your own thoughts and being your own best friend? Because that's where it all starts. That's where you're going to build your self-confidence from to go and meet new people. Mm. Um, And the second part of this is just simply being surrounded by the wrong people. Um, And I know we've mentioned like duration and times of friendships. Mm. And a lot of people cling on to friendships because they've been friends for years. Whereas actually time doesn't really play a factor into it. If that Mm. friend doesn't make you happy, doesn't make you feel connected, you know, doesn't serve you as a rewarding and a real friend, then Mm. it's okay to let go. And it's definitely okay to go meet new people and make the right connections because if you're surrounded by the wrong people, you will feel even lonelier. Yeah, I mean, that's a big one, isn't it? I, I think, you know, I, I mentioned before that um, in kind of in the run up to our conversation, I've kind of been binge, watch, binge watching or so binge listening to a lot of your episodes. And I know that's something you'd, 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 you'd um, touched upon quite early in the podcast and, and kind of that toxic relationships and um, that, that can be a real tricky one, can't it? You know, because although you may be abundant with people around you, um, they may not necessarily be the right people. And you may, especially if they're people that you've had for a long, you know, friends as a long time, or maybe you've grown up with, or maybe they're even parts of your family. It's um, it's hard to kind of, I guess, not push away from them, but just to give yourself your own space when you're around them and not to let their kind of, not to let them influence you, I guess. What What do you, when, when, when people are kind of faced with that, what kind of, um, how do you kind of guide them through that? How to manage that? Yeah, it, it's creating that, it's just creating distance from those people. You know, if you've got mm. someone that's toxic in your life that doesn't make you feel good, if you go to meet them, how do you feel when you come away? And if you come away from a friend meetup feeling drained, then mm. why would you want to waste your time doing that? Um, as adults, we've only got a certain, you know, very small amount of time and energy. And again, this is something I bang on about all the time and it's spending those wisely when you've Mm. had a week at work and you've got, you know, family and responsibility and other stresses. When you get those pockets of time to spend with your friends, they should be fun. They should be really enjoyable and it should fill your energy cup back up. So yeah, it, it it's it's as easy as just creating some distance. And you know, I never recommend having big fallouts with friends or you know yeah. any craziness like that. It is literally just creating that distance and yeah. making sure you're out meeting new people as well, and not just relying on old friends because it's easy. Mm. Uh, going back to um, some of the things I know you've spoken about in it in. The- in um, past episodes of your podcast and and the blogs and that there were there were two two things that I, when I was listening to I sort of punched the air and thought I I really agree with that too and <laughs> and the first one the first one was um, I've heard you speak about banter before yeah and and I I think as a guy um, that's I don't know if it's more prominent but in my world that's kind of been something that's been. Um, kind of always kind of accepted if that makes sense yeah um um whereby 
you know if you're maybe listening to this overseas or maybe you haven't come across this word before Bantu is basically it's just kind of either ribbon people taking the mick out of other people whereby you just palm it off as being like jokey and oh it's just what happens was that how you kind of describe banter yeah exactly that or as I call it bullying in disguise <laughs> yeah because <laughs> I think if I if I if I think back to sort of going through school and growing up and all that kind of stuff and into sort of early adult life when you're sort of going out with friends and that kind of stuff when I look back on it now you know some of that is you know you think about it it was just so just wrong you know you know what we do to our who we call our friends sometimes and and um you know looking back on it now I can see you know the sort of detrimental effects of of this stuff but it's just yeah. kind of brushed under the carpet at the time isn't it and I think it's I think especially in the, in this country um sort of that the culture has made it more allowable you know not not that I spend much time watching or listening to it but if we look to things like um um shows like um anyway as Essex or Love Island or that kind of stuff it's all talking about bants and all banter and all that kind of stuff and in a way yeah. that it's almost <sighs> it's almost saying to the young people that are watching it that it's okay to do that to each other and whereby I know from experience where you know I've had that to me or I've known people that have gone through that you just feel really rubbish afterwards and although you kind of take it on the chin as something that just happens with the friendship group it's, it's really not great is it no and this is where like I think male and female friendship really differs and mm. I think that's probably like one of the questions I get most asked is like why is this just for women um, and it's not that you know I only want to help women um, no. it's that male and female friendships are so different and they should be treated differently so I think banter uh, is especially prominent in male friendships mm. because it's almost a way of masking like vulnerable conversation or, yeah. you know, opening up. So mm. it's almost, yeah, it's, it's seen as like a friendly way of connecting, but it's mm. not that friendly. <laughs> it's literally yeah. taking someone's worst point or something that they're really mm. conscious of, you know, and, and just bringing it to light. And yeah, it's not going to make the other person feel good. Yeah. I, I you know, through, if I look back at my experience and kind of growing up and that kind of thing, um, I think it was kind of a frustration to know knowing what to talk about as a as a guy or knowing what to chat about. So you just reverted to taking the mic out of someone because you yeah. didn't really know how to get into conversation. And it's yeah. something that um, always makes my my wife laugh when if I if I go out for meet a friend. And um, the two differences is that, say, if my, my wife Tanya, she goes out to meet her friends and she comes back and I say, oh, how so and so? She says, oh, la, 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 la. oh, they're doing this, they're doing that. And, and then she'll, if I go out with one of my friends, um, she'll say, oh, how, how so and so doing? I said, yeah, it's all right. And, and that's it. <laughs> that's all you <laughs> know. Said, well, and that's like, so, so what did you talk about for the last two hours? And it's like, well, you know, just stuff and that kind of thing. And um, it's, it's, just, it's just so different. But what I find now is that, as I'm getting older and now um, the, the relationships that I have now, they are those that can talk about this stuff. I don't know if it's something that we, we just come to the conclusion that the, the re, you know, the, the other approach just wasn't serving us at all. And yeah. but I, I found out that whether, I think it's probably because I'm now searching for those kind of relationships, those friendships and exactly. that, you know, like attracts like, and then, you know you're in those sorts of um friendships so those conversations will come and, and now it's and now it's really great and i'm a big believer of what you put out you you, you know you attract in that respect um the, the second big thing um that i said yes i agree with Gemma when i was listening to it was um saying no to stuff that was huge so you know we're all in those circumstances where maybe you know we have people that are a little bit toxic we don't even spend enough but maybe they're part of work or maybe they're part of family or maybe they're part of a close circle when you're kind of expected to be in those situations. There's no problem in saying no, if it doesn't serve you. Definitely. Um, and it's, it all comes back to just again, protecting your time and energy mm. um, by saying yes to something you don't want to do. Mm. You're going to dread it the whole time till that thing comes. Oh God, and yeah. 
then you're going to either pull out last minute anyway or go and not really enjoy yourself anyway, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think if it's certain that actually that person's going to drain you or you're not going to have a nice mm-hmm. time, like it's totally okay to say no. Yeah. Um, I, I think, think, I think, sorry, carry on. Um, I think there's this culture online at the moment, isn't there, where the, um, it's kind of like this yes culture. It's like, oh, say yes to everything and new opportunities. Yeah. You never know what's going to come around. And I think you have to really consider what type of person you are anyway. Mm. So this was something that I learned because I was like, oh, I need to start saying yes to everything that comes my way. But actually I'm quite an extroverted person anyway. And I do say yes naturally. So I was finding, I was just saying yes to just way too much stuff. And and again, like overwhelming myself. And actually I needed to learn to say no to things. Yeah. I I think, I think the revelation for me was, um, you know, I kind of, in before I'd kind of build those situations up and I think, Oh, I can't really, I don't really want to do this. Don't want to go out of these people and build it up. Like you say, but then the revelation came when I was maybe asked to go to do bits and pieces. And I, and I just have that conversation to say, look, to, to be honest with you, um, when I'm in that situation or whether we've, those people, I don't really have a great time to be honest. And, yeah. um, I'd love to spend more time, with you maybe on a one-to-one basis um and maybe we can go out and do xyz but um i just don't feel comfortable in that either of that situation or with those people and 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 to be honest they just said oh that's that's fine that's great we'll just sort something else out and we'll do something else because i think often you find that within a a, a friendship group or a, a group you hang out with there are lots of people within there that you'd really love to spend time with and really like to um you know hang out with but there are some others in there which you you know you're not that bothered about but they tend to come in the same group sometimes you know yeah Um, I love that and and when when you're an adult you pretty much know what you do and don't like so mm. it could even be like a specific thing that people are doing you know if the if the group of friends is doing something and you know actually I don't I don't really fancy that it's okay to say Mm. no you don't have to go you know through fear of missing out or or whatever Um, and then like you say, it's, it's okay to have those honest conversations, just be like, actually, I'd rather hang out, you know, one to one, um, because that's what I prefer. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, as I was saying, that was real kind of revelation for me. And, and just, you just, just feel, just feel everything just relax and go, oh, you know, I can then go out and arrange something else, um, yeah. and, and, and have a, re- and have a, re- and have a really great time. Um, I know as a byproduct from, you know, some of the experience I've had and from listening to your stuff, I think it's the same for the people that listen to you is that um, there's some health benefits to just come off the back of this stuff. You know, um, as you said before, similar to what we were just talking about, whereby maybe we're worried about doing something, going out with certain people. Maybe we've got toxic people in our lives. Maybe we, we haven't got, uh, you know, as many acquaintances in a period of time as we'd like to have, they do have benefits on our on our health, by via our mental health. Be it, be it maybe we don't want to, um, we feel more maybe re- more reclusive at home, so maybe we don't visit the gym and that kind of stuff. Do you kind of see? Do you see those things when you meet and chat to people? What do you think the kind of, I guess, the positive um, that comes out of kind of widening your friendship groups around the people that you love to spend time with? Yeah. So mental health like for our mental health we need connection we need Mm. community so a huge part of that is friendship and if you speak to a lot of adults you know a lot of people are stressed and busy and and actually if those people took a moment to think okay when was the last time I actually saw my friends or spoke to my friends you know had some time to myself had that social time away from Mm. the stresses and strains of life um, it's such a game changer and especially with loneliness like loneliness has such an impact on um, mental health in particular and then it kind of goes on even into physical health and recently there was a study where it's um, loneliness was proved to be worse for your health than I think it was like smoking 10 cigarettes a day or something yeah. or, and not yeah. exercising for however long you know and and it does have such an impact. We, we need people, we need our community, even, even people that are introverted and love spending time on their own, they still need that little support network around them that they can fall back on. Mm. So I always recommend to put like time slots for friendship in your diary. Mm. And so yeah. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? You know, with diary, anything else, you know, work, 
chat or a, or a meeting or anything like that. And, you know, equally as important, if not more important is just spending this time with, with the people that we love or, you know, we have friendships with. And, um, you know, when I look back to, you know, times when I've been a little bit, I guess, more reclusive down if, if because of work or other bits and pieces, it does, you do feel that the, 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 I guess it's that mind body connection, isn't it? You know, that everyone speaks about and that, you know, there's such a, if you're feeling down, generally you'll, you'll have other, um, other, um, you, maybe you eat more or you won't go out or all that, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's just it's such a knock on effect, isn't it? And it can be so easily changed by just reaching out to people. And it is, um, it's like a vicious circle when you get into mm. it. Um, and in those moments, the last thing you want to do is go out. Like if you get into that, you know, that state where you're sort of feeling lonely yeah. or feeling like you don't want to go anywhere and feeling a bit down. And, you know, the first thing you think of is, right, I'm canceling all my plans and staying in, you know, I, mm. I don't want to see anyone. But the cure is not less people. Um, it's more connection. So yeah. maybe those people don't serve you, you know, as rewarding and real friends, but actually maybe you can go out and make better connections that will make you feel better. Mm. And you, and you mentioned before about, you know, the kind of the first thing that you kind of take people through is around spending time with yourself. Um, why do you, why do you think it is that we feel so uncomfortable with that initially? Um, is it just because we're used to just hanging out with other people? I genuinely think it's the lifestyle that we lead now. We are okay. so used to distraction, like mm. any spare moment and I'm guilty for this you know if there's silence in the house I'm like quick put you know music on radio on okay. podcast on mm -hmm. you know you can't even walk the dog without putting a podcast on now or <laughs> um, pop the telly on speak to your friends you know on your phone message um and there's there's times again I'm guilty for it for having like multiple screens on at once you know I might have my main yeah. computer on my phone telly and we're so used to having these distractions that we barely get those moments where we're alone with our own thoughts now, but mm. they're so important to have because you have to be your own best friend. You know, at the end of the day, you're the person supporting yourself in your head. So that voice needs to support you and, and you need to connect with that. But by constantly distracting it, you just get further and further away from doing that. Mm. I think I think there's just so many little things that you can try like um what's a good one like going to the cinema on your own something like that yeah um, yeah I think I, th I think that's something that initially when you think about it, if you haven't done it before you kind of think on my own sit there I'll look I'll look weird on my own what am I going to go sit there on my own but in fact you know it's one of those good kind of like little challenges that you can give yourself and that you can walk out and think wow, I did that. I really enjoyed that. And it's something that I can do on my own. It's not reliant on anyone else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, cause I think sometimes as well, you know, if you, if you arrange to do stuff with, with friends and maybe they, they can't go at the last minute for some reason, most of the time you probably say, Oh, well, I won't go either, you know? And then yeah. you'll maybe sit there waller and think, and you'll then start trying to think about why they actually can't go out. You know, is it, they don't like me anymore. Is it because yes. they've got other friends and your, <laughs> and your mind will start going in, in overdrive. But if you can just kind of, I guess, just kind of push yourself just a little bit more over that um, safety zone and, and just do it. Um, yeah. Something like that is really great. Would you, would you kind of encourage people to do those like kind of little baby steps in, in kind of, if they wanted to help themselves in spending time on their own? Yeah. Definitely. You, ha you need to spend time alone. And the, the best thing you can do is get so used to spending time alone that you don't care what anyone else thinks and you don't feel weird. So that when you make plans with friends and if they have to cancel, you'll be going anyway. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah. the way to eliminate any disappointment from other people because you're not relying on other people to do stuff. You're still no. going regardless whether they're coming mm. or not. You know, it adds to it if they do come, but if not, you're going to be mm. fine alone. Yeah. So it's really important. And, and yeah, like you say, baby steps, like go for a coffee or mm. go for a nice walk, you know, even just little things like that. And spending time alone is as important as spending time with your friends and family and the people that you love. Mm. One of the things that has been pretty mind blowing to myself and, and over the last, I guess, I guess about uh, four, four, three or four years, I guess, is the use of meditation mm. um, and the way that, you know, it's, it's, it's spending time on your own, um, but 
focusing solely on yourself so you know when you're meditating either via an app to guide you or or by your own kind of um, practice you know you have to sit there on your own there's no kind of excuse you you can't change the situation you know um and that's been huge for me and and i choose to do that kind of first thing in the morning um and for me that just allows me to kind of reset um from the the day before um have some time on my own you know use that time to you know i use like a an app to sort of guide me through some of the things i want to sort of focus on um but that's that's been really helpful um and and something that i think um people could try if they if they want to help themselves sort of spend them time their time on their own is, is that something that you've sort of dabbled in or had experience of yeah i've done a bit of meditation and i think mm. it's important to have those self-care routines as well yeah um so yeah just just finding those little things that you love to do like yeah. i think for me like i really enjoy breakfast like that's my favorite meal of the day so i'll take myself mm. for breakfast and i really yeah. enjoy that um and then yeah you know even as simple as like taking a nice bath and just listen to yeah. a bit of relaxing music or I, light I think a nice that's candle what, you know yeah i think that's what people forget in that you know meditation can be listening to your favorite piece of music it yeah. can be going to the coffee shop like you say and spending time on your own um it just means that you're focusing on yourself you know regardless of what it is because i appreciate that sitting cross-legged in the middle of the room isn't for everyone yeah um, and, <laughs> and they'd pro- perhaps be doing something else that was more kind of it was fit into their kind of likes and dislikes so it doesn't have to be the tra- traditional route it's just kind of sitting with yourself in a scenario which you find enjoyable um, and as you say that can be you know lots of different sort of things to try yeah. Um, for, I guess for people that have maybe come across the work that you do and, um, that they do want to kind of reach out to more people, um, mm-hmm. you know, we've got, I guess we've got so many more options now with the online space where there's, there's ways that we can find both friendships and relationships in the traditional sense, you know, how, how do you kind of if people want to take baby steps into into sort of meeting more people what do you kind of encourage people to do so my first one is just to start conversations everywhere you go Mm. so just get really used to speaking to strangers so that could be the checkout lady in the supermarket it could be the bus driver it could be Mm. someone in the office you've never spoken to before Mm. and just building those connections just leaves you feeling so good as well. Like it's, it's almost like a self love thing by, by making people smile and by starting those conversations, because if you get so used to doing that, when you come across someone that you think, Ooh, actually I quite like to be the, like friends with them or, you know, make a better connection with them. It will be easy. So yeah. as with any, anything, it takes practice. And if you can just make it part of your everyday, that everywhere you go, you start these conversations, you make people smile, you're, you're creating your own vibe. And as the saying goes, your vibe attracts your tribe. And it yeah. really is so true. So when I started my friend project, you know, I felt lonely, I felt down, I was a bit miserable. And as soon as I started learning all of these tools that I could help myself with, I, I just felt so good. And once you've built up that really positive energy where you can just speak to anyone and do you know what? You've done so much work on self-love and self-worth that if someone doesn't want to be your friend, it really doesn't matter because you'll go find someone else that does want to be your friend. Mm. Um, that vibe's irresistible. You know, if people see you being really happy and energetic, people want a part mm. of that. Oh, of course that's that's such a great tip because you know i think like you say if you have been feeling a bit low or you have been feeling um you know you know lonely you know the last thing you want to do is then go and immediately try and push yourself into those situations where you're you have to meet people uh, like going to meetups or, or whatever you choose to do so yeah yeah that just small things um you know one of the things that i've done for quite a while is just just like you say with the checkout people and just saying just wishing them a great day you know have a great day have a great evening um and it's really funny it's fun really funny now because um i've got a seven-year-old girl and she started to do that herself um when she i love that and and that is so great you know if you can and i I, I try and tell her afterwards because the beginning she was sort of like well why'd you do that for because like all these other people in the queue are like aren't saying that you know or 
talking to people you don't really know these people and i said well to be honest you know you don't know how good a day that person's had you know they could have been on had a really crappy shift they could have maybe have challenges at home they could be or they could be super happy and you might sort of just you know make their day a little bit better but just any sort of things like that i think especially where um where, where you kind of can get a reaction as well because it kind of it is 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 validation if you're going through that that what you're doing is kind of helping someone else and what i've found generally over the past four years that i've been on the planet is that if you can just help people get what they want or to or just to make them feel a little bit better um there's there's a benefit for you in that as well whether it's validation and what you're doing is correct or just making you feel good so that you can spread more yeah um so i so i think that yeah that, that's such a great tip you know even just going into the supermarket and asking someone about a product that's on the shelf that you know are probably what that product is but you're just going to ask them anyway yeah. um just to kind of engage in some conversation um because it's tough isn't it especially if you've feel, been feeling like that the last thing you want to do is kind of make conversation with random strangers but it's a, a little thing that you can do every day um just to kind of build that muscle i guess yeah um and and what about because i think for, for a lot of people um we we just go online immediately because that's where a lot of the services we use are that's where a lot of our connections are would you would you encourage people to steer away from online initially and kind of go more face to face if they want to start meeting people or is it does it does it depend on the person yeah i think online is such a great way to meet new people and i know during my friend project that was the main way that i met people because mm. you can find local people so easily and i think by looking for local people is a start um you know oh, it's great to have online friends everywhere and um you know it's always a good excuse to kind of explore new places if you've got friends in different places yeah but if you can find people locally that's great or if you can use the online world to find local groups to you again that's yeah. really positive um i think like the go-to <laughs> for when you want to make friends you know people say oh just um just start a hobby or join a club and mm. for me i just truly believe there's so many steps that like the ones that we've spoken about in between where you are now and joining that club um before you can make friends there because if you go to a club just expecting to make friends and you don't you're going to feel even worse than you did before you went yeah. so if you can work on those techniques of starting conversations and yeah building your self-worth so that mm. actually it's you know if you go to the club and you meet someone that's great if you don't that's you know that's also fine um but I just also, to, sorry Karen. no i was gonna say i guess also you know using the online spaces is, is a good way of just finding niche probably things that you might be into um maybe you really love um trains or something like that and you want to hang out with other people that, that love trains um yeah. then you can probably easily find that online by use of google and that kind of stuff um so it may be a good kind of gateway into um you know rather than just thinking oh there's no one around here that likes trains there probably is and you just need to go and find them and and you know um, find them online it's um so i think that's when we talk about what you know a lot of people call our tribe now and um why do you i mean we've spoken about it a little bit um, but why do you think it's important to spend time with people that love the same things as we do? It just builds that kind of worthiness and that connection and that community mm. vibe. Yeah. Um, you know, and you need people around you that build you up, that celebrate your successes with you and that are yeah. actually with you in the bad times too. And if you can find those people, like they're the people to cling on to because they just make your life so much better. Um, yeah. You know, and you can, you could just try new experiences with different people and you learn so much more from others. Mm. 
Um, so having your tribe is invaluable in that way, you know, and if you can find people that are into the same thing, like, for example, if you own your own business, like it's so important to have people that are in the same all sort yeah. of similar positions mm -hmm. that are walking the same path as you. If you're new parents, it's great to speak to other parents and be, you know, you can compare sort of, okay, is this normal? Um, you know, and, and it's so great to find people on your path now. Mm. that can support you on your journey and that you can support as well because there's so much joy to come from helping others i think, so, I think that's i think that's huge because it, you know a lot of the time when we're maybe we're feeling low we are feeling lonely at that time we think we're the only person in the whole world that's got that problem yeah. you know if, if we if we haven't shared it with anyone and then that kind of realization um you know when the, when the sun comes out and the birds start singing when you realize that there's other people probably in the next street that have got the same kind of challenges as that you're experiencing and just having the opportunity to to share that with someone um is just huge isn't it it is and it it just makes you feel just connected into the world doesn't it like we say you know we've got the online world but you know it's not reality it's it is a virtual world which is it's crazy when you step back and think about it so to have these people in real life that are going to help you with real problems and to celebrate the real great things, yeah. Um, yeah, really just adds so much more to life. And when, you know, and when we start to kind of connect with new people and we, we start to find people that we want to hang around with, you know, it's important that we kind of, I guess, nurture those relationships um, so that we make them healthy. You know, what kind of tips can you offer people about kind of, um making sure that once you've found people that you love to hang around with that you know you sort of ensure that they're they're around for the sort of the long term you know um in kind yeah. of nurturing so one thing i do is i make sure that if you know how you could be doing something random and someone pops in your head <laughs> you know whether that's a family member or a friend and it happens yeah. so often when you start to notice it and you know really think about it it actually does happen a lot so every time that happens to me i contact them so if someone okay. pops in my head i'm just I, you know just a quick message like hey how are you you know i was just thinking about mm. you randomly and it's lovely to receive messages like that um yeah. so just keeping up those little points of contact is great and also just not having any expectations from friendships really helps to nurture them so yes. As I mentioned, yeah, at the beginning, we can really sort of look at our friends to be almost like our therapists and to fill those <laughs> voids for us. But that's not what they're yeah. there for. They're there to share a journey with you. So if you can just enjoy your time with them and, yeah, like I say, just connect in those small ways rather than having expectations of oh well you you've not contacted me in a while like contact them yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. and and make events and um you know buy tickets to things to look forward to as well because as i say when life gets busy they're the things we forget about so mm. it's great to to share things with other people and to have those things to look forward to as well i think also just being mindful that it's a two-way relationship as well you know i think if you're if you've maybe felt low or you felt lonely before and you you're looking for someone to to share that with you need to ensure that you you give the other person space as well as and when they need it to to share things back at you and you know it's just not kind of one-sided i think that maybe happens sometimes as well whereby um you know relationships turn into things whereby someone might use that relationship for their own benefit and then stop Mm -hmm. and then maybe not get in contact unless they need something else in that relationship and i think that's so important isn't it to have something that's healthy that runs two ways definitely and if you identify those things and that actually this person only contacts me when they want something yeah it's fine to well, just yourself away <laughs> yeah no, um, no, and also works kind of the other way as well if you've got a friend that suddenly behaves differently suddenly goes quiet actually like check up on them you know it can be for so many reasons maybe they're super stressed at work maybe they are struggling with their mental health and it's it's great to have those honest conversations and to set that tone that you can be vulnerable with each other so that in those you know moments of need that they feel like they can message you 
And one really important thing for me that came out of my friend project is that me and my friends use the word loneliness as the emotion that it is. So, you know, sometimes my friends will message me now and be like, you know what, I feel really lonely today. And I just, you know, it fills my heart with so much joy that we can, we can share those vulnerabilities now. Mm. Oh, that's really interesting because we wouldn't necessarily go straight to that word, would we? We'd go, mm. you know, I feel a bit shit or I feel a bit low or I feel a bit, you know, this, that and the other. And that's really interesting. This our use of language as well. Um, because it's such a taboo, you know, it's like, yeah. you're not allowed to say that you're lonely because no. as I said, like back in childhood in school, if you were lonely, it means like you're a loser, you don't fit mm. in, like what's wrong with you? There must be something wrong with you. Whereas, you know, now we're all adults, it's fine to say, I actually have a little bit lonely. Mm. Oh, this is such a good conversation. I'd, <laughs> I'd, you know, we can, we could spend a lot of time talking about all this sort of stuff and going off on all sorts of tangents, but you know, this podcast is, is called make today count. And the purpose of being that, you know, I want to reach out to as many people as I can and try to share with them thoughts, ideas, tips, so that they can pick up these things and run with them. I guess earlier than I did, you know, um, whether in school, they're, you know, going into work, maybe the different stages of their lives. Um, if someone is feeling they maybe a little bit lonely, or maybe they just want to connect with more people, or maybe they've got friends, maybe they just want to connect with ones that are a little bit better fit for them. Um, what one tip would you give to someone if, if they said from tomorrow, I just want to take a baby step into to reaching out to more people or to getting into some better relationships, what what would you what would you say to them? This is going to be easier said than done, but just mm. don't fear rejection. Yeah. It's a part of everyday life, and if we try to, you know, avoid rejection um, in everything that we do, we wouldn't achieve anything. So. Mm as I mentioned earlier, start those conversations with everyone. Like that's the best, easiest sort of small step you can take. Um, But other than that, just go for it. Actually, people love to find new friends. And if you want to be friends with someone, they'll love that. If you meet someone and feel like a genuine connection, maybe you've got some things in common, then yeah. ask to swap like Instagrams, you know, with the, the best thing about social platforms is they're there to, for people to see. So yeah. it feels so less personal to be like, Oh, are you on Instagram? And, you know, add mm. them rather than being mm. like, Oh, can I take your number? Like that feels, <laughs> you know, that step yeah. kind of more personal, doesn't it? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, make sure you like, if you find someone you get on with, go for it. Just say, oh, are you on Instagram? You know, swap Instagrams, maybe send them a follow-up message the next day. Great to meet you if you fancy a coffee sometime. And just go for it. There's nothing to lose and friends to gain. That's such a good tip. Such a good tip. If, if I guess if people listen to this and um, they want to kind of um, get in touch with a m- bit more about what, what you do i mean you mentioned before that you've got the blog that's running the podcast that's running which you can um find on wherever you find your podcasts um where else have you got anything else that you're kind of working on or looking forward to yeah so i've got a a big project ongoing um which is more of like a loneliness study so that's going to be yeah a bit of a life's work i think so that'll be ongoing um and yeah i'm sort of building a online community as well so uh through the blog yeah i've got the make friends club so we're Mm. building a nice community there and and just bringing like you say bringing people together that feel the same way Mm. i can see a book in you as well Gemma. at some point (laughs) yes i can i can feel that that there's a book that needs to be written from you i think Um, oh thank you yeah i'll get uh get thinking about that yeah (laughs) um (laughs) If, if people want to connect with you, um, I imagine you're on all the networks, but where can we find you? Where's the best place to go? Yeah, so um, Instagram is probably the social media platform I use the most. So it's um, at how to make friends underscore. Yeah. Um, and the blog is how to make friends.co.uk. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time today. It, it's been such a great time to sort of chat with you and to, to learn a little bit more about what you do. Um, you know, I really appreciate the time. I think. Um, I think when I first, you first came onto the radar when I I think I saw locally that you'd start to arrange some kind of meetups locally, um, for ladies that that wanted to kind of meet up and, and make more friends. And as I kind of delve deeper in sort of, 
into um your podcast and that kind of thing it's it's just kind of like a lot of the stuff just so resonated with me so i encourage if you're a guy if you're a girl if you're a dog if you're a cat just listen to um Gemma's stuff because there's so much stuff in there and i just wanted to give my gratitude to you because there's from what i see from your social from the the people that follow you the the podcast reviews you're doing such good work and i think it's um, the way that you put across the information is so laid back, is so approachable. Um, it's, it's, you know, you're no doubt helping lots of people all over. And, and you know, as someone that's got a, a seven-year-old girl um, that's growing up gradually, um, it's really good to know that there's people like you in the world that are raising these sort of conversations so that oh. she, can, she can learn in that way as well. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, um, thank you so much. This has been so much fun. No, no worries at all. Thank you so much. Um, also, I just just to note, just to mention as well that I guess if you are in a situation where you're feeling a little bit low, um, the best place to go, would you agree, is to just maybe have a chat to your your GP if you're feeling in that situation. Um, Gemma? Yeah, yeah, no? there are plenty of um, people out there. So yeah, GP. If you feel like it's more immediate, obviously there's Samaritans that are twenty four seven. You can call um, and. Just to give that number, that's one one six one two three here in the UK. Um, if you want to get in touch with those, um, I hope you found that conversation really insightful. I had such a great time speaking to Gemma. Um, I look forward to speaking to another great guest on the next episode of Make Today Count. Um, in the meantime, if you'd like to leave us a review over wherever you find your podcasts, or leave us a review on the blog as well, we'd really love to hear from you. But until next time, I've been Ross Dean. This has been Make Today Count. <laughs>